we hope that you are all enjoying your holiday break. I think we're in Mexico right now. I think we are in Mexico right now for, Hell yeah. for um, on the holidays. So, Feliz Navidad, everybody. Yes, and Feliz Cumpleaños to, well, all, if, to everybody. I mean, if people have December birthdays, I Yeah, suppose. you know, or, is that what that means? Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, good, I got it covered then. <laughs> or does um, it mean anniversary? So, this is a very special uh, episode from the previous year that we wanted to share once again with all of you. We have many new new listeners. Um, and by the way, thank you all very much. We are one of the top five um, percent listen, shared, shared, shared globally globally yeah. podcasts I, in the world. I, that really, really helps a podcast to have listeners share it. So we are so honored and so proud and so flattered. We that thank you so much for sharing yeah. the show. You have no idea what it means to us. Um, you guys are the greatest audience of all time. And we wanted to share one of our favorite episodes of all time with you, which is Elvis and John Lennon are alive or not. Or not. <laughs> or not. I like what we put or not in parentheses. <laughs> yeah. But maybe they are. It's like IDK, no, IDK though. <laughs> exactly. Right? The shrug emoji. I don't know though. I don't want you to get take this information out of hand and ruin your life. <laughs> shrug. Elvis, uh, uh, my favorite part of this episode, you'll get to it, but he was, did you know that Elvis did some serious background work? Extra work. At, in Home Alone, <laughs> which is a movie it's that so you funny. might have watched this week. So rewatch it and see if you can find Elvis. Dumb conspiracies are our favorite, so please enjoy. See you on the other side. Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo. Hello, everybody. What's up? And my name is Crypto King. Oh, he's a Crypto King today. So do not call him Ace. Do not call him Iceman. Please don't. Do not call him the Miracle Man. I would not Man. like that. Thank you. That is not who he is. Thank you. Um. Okay, so we're going to talk about another conspiracy today. Oh, and no, I'm turning it off. It involves celebrities. I know half people have turned it off, but you know what? We don't need them. We only need you. That's right. Because you get it. Like, you get yeah, it. You make it happen. Okay. You understand. Like, these are people like, oh, I can't populate my brain with that. It's those like, are oh. the people that are like, we take everything for face value. Okay. Uh, like, uh, I take life very seriously. Oh. So, I did an episode a couple months ago about celebrities who are alive that people have a conspiracy theory that they are actually dead and replaced by clones. And someone in the comment section asked if I could do an episode about celebrities who are supposedly dead that people think are actually alive and maybe they fake their death. And they said this after saying that episode was a classic. It was a classic. Haters. <laughs> I actually love these episodes. Me too. Well, one, I like the celebrity conspiracies because it's like I, I've i been in the entertainment industry long enough that I'm like, there's some truth that's stranger than fiction. So it's like nothing can be that far-fetched far actually um and then there's also it's like usually pretty wild so it's like okay maybe i could stretch my brain to go there but it most likely didn't happen yeah, yeah, yeah. um so anyway i think these are pretty fun there's a lot of celebrities that people think are actually still alive that have publicly deceased um to name a few like michael jackson tupac shakur uh, but we're just going to focus on two today because it just it's just so much. There's just like so much theory to both of these, um, starting with Elvis. Oh, and yeah. This one, I, I didn't. OK, I'm new to Elvis. I don't I haven't researched a whole lot about him um, as far as his death and the conspiracy goes. But I do think that his particular conspiracy theory is pretty interesting. Uh, to say the least. Okay. So I will uh, will go through a couple of the different aspects of this. There are a few different theories. Can I guess one? Okay, go ahead. He choked on a peanut butter and banana sandwich. And then his favorite stayed alive. And he died on the toilet because he liked to eat his sandwiches on the toilet. Well, it's not about uh, the conspiracy theory. Does not involve him dying. It involves him faking his death because he did die. You know, you do know that Elvis is dead. I don't personally believe that, so that, that's difficult for me. Okay, so maybe you believe in one of these theories. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, so the first reason, or well, actually the first theory is that, um, so there were some documents that had been uncovered after his death that alluded to the fact that he always, well, one, he he's very open about how much he loves America. Yes. And he, uh, he loved the military, the government. He was very, like, pro- military he government was in the stuff army yeah during ww2 but he there were documents where he actually wrote to the administration at that time about wanting to help the fbi with any in any way possible like just wanting to be like a good patriot and like help the 
be an undercover agent even. And so a lot of people think that he was helping to bust a certain mafia at the time called the Fraternity, I believe. And something went wrong where he got busted as an undercover agent. So he was like doing this deal where he was buying a plane. And like they figured out that he was actually working with the FBI. Oh, wow. And so he had to fake his death and then go into witness protection basically and create a new identity and not be seen ever again in order to you know survive. And so it's very, very hush hush because if the fraternity found out he was still alive, they would make sure that didn't happen. Wow. Can you imagine those conversations too? I'm just trying to help the fraternity, baby. <laughs> um, I yeah. wish. I hope. So there's a, an author. Her name is Gail Brewer Giorgio. And she wrote a, bro- a book in 1988 called Is Elvis Alive? And explained to Time Magazine that after looking at tons of FBI documents, she concluded that Presley had to go into witness protection because of this after the um, FBI enlisted him to bust this organization. And... Um, he, she also told Time uh, that she isn't sure if he's still alive today. Sure, sure, sure. But she knows for a fact that he didn't die on the day that they say Let's he died. Let's go. That's I like what, that. That's what she said. I like that. Although some people have said that they've looked through all of the same FBI documents and they're, they did not reach the same conclusions. Yeah, they said they found documents that showed that he, in fact, died on the toilet. I did see the handwritten letter where he wrote saying that he wanted to help the FBI. Well, yeah, he was very, like you said, he's very patriotic. Yeah. There's pictures of him and Nixon. Like, he was very much just yes. like, let's go. He's like, how can I help my country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so uh, there's a couple other uh, a couple other clues that support the evidence that um, he may still be alive or he didn't die that, that day that they said he died. Yeah. Um, so one of them is there was a man who was headed to Memphis airport and purchased a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires, Argentina, mm-hmm. Argentina, the capital. Uh, report, and reportedly the man looked like Elvis and he gave the name John Burroughs, which it was actually an alias that Elvis used to use when booking hotels for himself. And he said, yeah, I'm John Burroughs, baby. Yeah, yeah, he said it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did a f- dead giveaway. He said, "I'm a John Burroughs, baby," but he oh, wow, he was, was, he, was he was moving his hips like this. No, hips, yeah. he was trying to fake it's a really Midwest sexy. accent. He was trying to fake a Southern oh, yeah, accent, yeah, yeah. but you know, people still got. He's like, "You don't think I'm John Burroughs? I'm all shook up, baby." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he it might have been him. It could have been him. It and I actually know that from working in a hotel where a lot of a-list celebrities would stay and by the way people are always like when it comes to celebrity conspiracies yeah, yeah. they're like this could never happen because like so many people would have to keep their mouths shut about stuff but for a-list celebrities they're in like a different dimension like a different world b and c list celebrities i can't help you like i don't believe anything but a-list celebrities have some weird shit in my opinion here goes nikki again bragging about being a waitress for a-list celebrities it's uh, you're jealous because <laughs> Um, I got to meet. She's like uh, service to the stars. <laughs> I got to be rejected by a lot of celebrities, yeah, and you yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. So That's like, cool. don't let your jealousy okay. show. That's but cool. uh, yeah, you know, I worked at a hotel where like celebrities would stay there when they didn't want the public to know where they were. Okay. So like, usually people would stay there when they got cosmetic surgery done, or like if they just well, Dave Chappelle was there because he just generally wanted to hide from the public. Um, and then there was just like just a slew of those type of cele- celebrities. Um, you also met Leo DiCaprio. I have name drops. Yes. I met like any A-list celebrity, yeah. you name it. They, I've what met them. Leo's they were there. What was Leo's drink order? A double Grey Goose and Lime. So um, cool that so, she knows that. So fucking cool. By the way, his eyes piercingly blue. Yeah. Beautiful man. Like, pier- like sees through your soul. Yeah. I was, I was very taken You'd aback. You'd rather be married to him any day. Taken aback. No, I don't think I could. I'd be so intimidated. Okay. I, I married a man that I'm not never going to be intimidated yeah, yeah, by. It's way low. <laughs> way low on the scale. Never going to be intimidated. Never going to happen. You have to worry about brown that. eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Why? Brown eyes color of shit, don't you know? Anyway, what I was trying to get at was a lot of them would use aliases. So it's not like weird. Like they they did. And they used like funny aliases where like one, uh, the lead singer of Green Day, his um, alias was Sam Pellegrino. <laughs> and so it was just like, it's, Solid. they do that. Okay. They're cute. Um, another big fat clue uh, that they left in plain sight for everybody to see is that on Elvis's tombstone, they misspelled his middle name. It, it Wait, was his middle name? His middle name's Aaron, oh, but with shit. one A. 
And they spelled it with two A's. And that is to clue the public in or those who are watching that he that's not really Elvis. Can I know, actually that's not ask really you Elvis. this? They did not purpose. Why would you name your kid Elvis and then give him the most generic middle name of all time? Aaron, but without the two A's, just a one A Aaron. Okay, that's you ever that's seen exotic. a one A Aaron? No, that's exotic. So I take um, it back. Yeah, so they were like, let's do this shit on purpose because it's not really dead. I see. But what is Elvis, by the way? What is an Elvis? What do you mean? What is an Elvis? Where does it come from? Nobody names anybody Elvis. I don't, I don't know. Where the fuck does that come from? I've, I mean, there's Elvis Costello. I mean, how? Yeah, where happened? does that come from? What do you mean? Where does it come what from? What the hell does it mean? Did you do any research on it? On his name? Yeah, did you do any research for this? No, one? I didn't. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, very awesome. Some some fans said that actually he started spelling his name with two A's. His like his middle name. He started set up. Huh? Yeah, he just started yeah. spelling it with two A's. Kind of like how my middle name was misspelled at birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my birth certificate, yep. but sometimes I spell it the way it was meant to be spelled, and then sometimes I spell it like how it is legally. And no, honestly, no. I can't even remember which one's the real one now. But and the best thing is when people inform you that you spelled your own middle name wrong, because <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Because we, you know, we've been buying houses and stuff lately. Yeah. And then they're like, "Hey, you you spelled we've been your buying own... so many houses." You know what I'm <laughs> Excuse us. Uh, sorry, but yeah, no, but they're like, "Hey, you did your own middle name wrong," and it's like it's not because of this you don't understand you don't you don't, you don't get, get what it's like you don't get me you don't know what okay. it's like so the other another big clue um priscilla presley slipped up when she was being interviewed by oprah and uh she said she was saying quote and this is talking about their daughter um she said elvis wanted her to have everything he grew up very poor and then the interview takes a very strange turn when she goes that's exactly what he said the other day and then she corrects herself and goes, mm. I mean, that's what you said the other day. You said that, Oprah. <laughs> so people have been speculating that she and her family do keep in contact with him. And she just slipped up because oh. it was a casual, like, she was just talking to him the other Unbelievable. day. Unbelievable. You know, and Elvis wanted her to have everything because he didn't really know. He no, he too grew up very, very poor. Yeah, Paul. And, and it's exactly what you mm. said the other day. <laughs> Paul, what? Right. Mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. I believe it. There's also forums online dedicated to Elvis sightings. And um, there was an Elvis sighting at his 82nd birthday in Graceland. There was a man who would be around Elvis's age that had similar Elvis features that showed up with security personnel. You're telling me an Elvis impersonator managed to get onto Graceland. No, 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 no. Not an Elvis impersonator. Oh, he, my bad. He's an old man. But he on was his 82nd birthday. Dressed in the Elvis outfit. No, no, no. Outfit. He wasn't dressed in the Elvis outfit. He was dressed <laughs> in like a puffy. That was your evidence? Right. Like, he's wearing a sparkly white suit. Hello. It's yeah. over. We found him. But isn't that odd? Like, that is odd. That yeah. a guy that looks like him yeah, that, that would be that age shows up with security personnel. That's funny. I wish I had these pictures loaded, but I don't. And then he did blue suede shoes on stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another thing that's interesting is um, people think that there was a Home Alone extra that was Elvis. <laughs> okay, that's incredible. I'm in for that. Um, I can show you. I believe it already. Uh, wait, I did say... I see, hold on. I want you to see this because here's the... Was it an airport scene? Yes, it was actually. Have you seen it? No, but that's where I would put Elvis if I had Elvis. He was in an airport scene. Yeah, I'd put him in there because it's you can't tell. And like it's what do you mean? People. What do you mean you can't tell? Well, no, if I was going to do this like as a troll, uh huh, I would do it in like an airport scene where you it's kind of far back enough and like the the, the central cast is enough in focus where like if Elvis was there, yeah. I would have him cross like okay, yeah, go ahead. let me play this really okay, quick. Please. And Mark, you can play this on screen. This is awesome for everybody. Um, here it looks like Elvis to me, <laughs> but here's a clip of Elvis, okay, and then this is here's this guy. And then they're saying his look at his facial movements. And he's just the same facial That's movements. not Elvis, dude. I'm sorry. Okay. I wish. It does actually, I will say it kind of it kind of does look like he just ticked his head to the but left. But that's how old he would I be. Do that. That's how old he would be, and he has the same beard shape. That's not Elvis. Okay, we understand it's not Elvis, it but was. look at like look at this difference. 
Um, I get it. No I, shit, it's I not Elvis. It. Elvis it. is dead, but I this know, is the no, theory. No, but I wish it was. What do you mean you wish it was? Well, no, I just wish it was. I was looking at I was like, oh, god well, damn, Well, good thing close. that they tell you you can decide. I know. They say you decide, <laughs> Elvis, or just a coincidence, and you're on the coincidence side. I'm a coincidence but, guy. But, uh, you know, maybe... Yeah. It's the king. And that's maybe you're just a hater and that's how he's allowed to do things like that. My bad. Long live, long, live, long live the king. EAP. He, EAP. <laughs> he's hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Well, the reason they said that he showed up in the background of this Home Alone movie is because the director did another movie before Home Alone where... John Hughes. He did... Was it John Hughes? Oh, no. It was no. Cri- Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus? Yeah. Chris Columbus. Chris Columbus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was really confusing. You're like, that's whack. Like he just he did the pilgrim thing, right? No, okay. yeah, well that too. Um, but. So anyway, he did a movie about a group of girls kidnapping Elvis right before Home Alone, and supposedly the theory goes that Elvis saw the movie and liked it and begged to be an extra in the upco- in whatever his upcoming movie was. And he was still alive in this year, in like eighty. 80- what, no, he's nine when they made this movie. No, he's dead. Right, so right. But so Elvis, that's what I'm saying. Elvis in hiding no, saw no, the I know, movie. But okay. I'm just saying, like, help me understand, because like, when did Elvis die? Um, nineteen. I don't know. Now I have to look that oh, that's up. Okay, hold it's on. It's like I'm hosting JK News right now. I'm I know. Like, geez. Hey, fuck you, just man. Just fucking accept it. 1977, August sixteenth, nineteen seventy-seven. Yeah, yeah. So that's well before Home Alone came out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. I'm saying part of the theory, like he came out of hiding yeah, that makes sense. That because he color. saw a movie about him getting Love kidnapped it. and he was like, fuck yeah, I want to be in it. your next movie. Yep. And no one will even know because everyone thinks I'm dead. Of course. And also I'm older now. And so people like my fucking stupid ass husband will be like, that's not him, but it Thank really you. is him. Okay. Then uh, you got this footage of him with the, um, that people think the groundskeeper of Graceland is him. And they even show the groundskeeper making a sign to the camera indicating life. Like he's alive. Like he knows the camera's mm. watching. And hey, I'm, al- I'm alive. It's like a V with his finger. Okay. Like this. Yeah. So in numerology, like the, the Illuminati or like this means that. Got it. Sign of life. That's word. Supposedly. I don't know. Okay, and the last thing that people have speculated on is that they think that Elvis assumed a new identity as a pastor in Arkansas named Bob Joyce. Even though Bob Joyce says he is not Elvis, everyone still is like, yeah, you are. Yeah, and it's they, not convincing, though. They even uh, made like a little site that, that combines their images to prove that he's Elvis. So... I don't know how people can even get it wrong. Hold on one second. Clearly Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> that is not Elvis. So they do this That is thing. not Elvis. That's so I funny. Know. <laughs> That's funny, man. Okay, but this combined with all of the other evidence, his tombstone being named wrong, his, him showing up on his own... His own uh, Graceland, Fair. 82nd birthday. Sure. Um, the groundskeeper in between pastoring. He's also a groundskeeper at his place. Plus, John Burroughs went to Argentina on this day. Plus, he had these documents about him wanting to work with FBI. Plus, Listen, Priscilla said that she just talked to him the other day. If I stared at the sun too much, I'd be like, that's Elvis. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm like, that doesn't even look like him like in the eyes or nose or anything. You know what's funny is that if people... if Elvis didn't die, and then this guy is the current Elvis. People would make conspiracies that they swapped him out. That Elvis died, and like they swapped him out for this no guy. No question. No question. Um, okay, so the that's that's the Elvis it's conspiracy. Good. That's way, about the end of the bad. road for that. Um, but the second person, this one is, gets a little bit more intricate. Um, so we may have to take a break in the middle of it. But yeah. I did want to bring up because there's several different. There's many details of this one um john lennon uh, as he appears on my shirt here john lennon uh is also someone that people think didn't really die okay personally i believe that john lennon of like the you know what is it mid 70s uh-huh. looks much different than the john lennon of the late 60s okay he grew facial hair but it's not just that he just looks different okay 
Well, actually, subscribe. It goes along with theory number one. Okay, let's go. So theory number one, and I actually found out about this theory when I was looking up the Paul McCartney is dead conspiracy. Just classic. One of the theories of the Paul is dead conspiracy is that there was always multiple Pauls. So even if one of the Pauls did die, maybe the one that we were most used to seeing, that there was always multiple Pauls, and so this is also a Paul McCartney, and that the Beatles themselves all had body doubles, and they were actually a band that was not organic, but but contrived Oof. by the global elites. Uh, it was a social engineering project by Tavistock and EMI, AKA the Illuminati, AKA the crown, Uh-oh. designed to mass influence the public. Duh. The Rolling Stones were also part of this Tavistock project. They were the bad boys to the Beatles' good boys. So basically whatever side the public chose, they controlled both sides. So you're still under control of them. Um, So this was like when they started, and this was the 60s. And this is when we have FBI documents talking about how all sorts of secret agencies were using mind control tactics and trying to figure out how to mass manipulate the public. So not too far-fetched if you combine that kind of evidence. And so this was the first, um, according to this theory, this, this is one of their first projects where they were seeing if it could be successful. And because of that, they had body doubles from the beginning. They had multiple versions of each of each lad so that the public could get used to seeing all kinds of versions and that you wouldn't, in your mind, you'd have a combination picture of all of them. Wow. And so they could swap them out at any time. It's and, like the Paul Walker family. What? Well, for some reason, they were able to replicate the image of Paul Walker by using Paul Walker's family. They used oh. his brother... That's the deep fake stuff, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. technology that Same they can idea, use. Same idea, though. Like, kind of. Okay. And yeah, they like some people will tell you that if you look up any pre-1966 footage that it's been tampered with and that they have been using like a combination of images on top of the footage and it's very, very hard to get untouched, untampered with footage of the Beatles. Wow. And why is that? Like, is it because yeah, Paul died and now they, they, they want to replace his image? Or is it because all of them had different body doubles take over um and then they tried to do beach boys as the american version classic I love them. but the caa was like kind of a baby back then so like they hadn't they didn't get their training rules off yet and so the beach boys didn't get as big as as the beatles but yeah. it's kind of interesting when you think about this because nobody wants to believe that story that they were basically the first industry plant because the story is so nice that they were like these this organic group of lads from liverpool that like it's like a cinderella story like they were talented musicians that just made it and they made it huge but it's it's interesting that they were actually only together for like less than a decade and they still influence it on a massive scale right now like i bought this shirt at target like three years ago that's 60 years later she's wearing a beetle shirt i'm wearing a beetle shirt right now um and that's 60 years later and uh, they're having a documentary. A Beatles documentary yep, is November. coming out. Or actually, by the time End this episode November. comes out, yep. it'll already be out. Um, so that's re- launching on Disney Plus, and that's a, a Beatles. Like, who wants to know how the Beatles made an album that they weren't even around? They weren't even alive for. I, I do. They're so influential. But why do I want to see that? Yeah. But I do want to see it. <laughs> but why do I want to see that? How did they creep into every generation? Even though this was like more than a half a century ago. What's your theory? I just think it's interesting, like, I mean, obviously, I think that knowing just from an entertainment background, it's all about PR and marketing. So whoever owns the rights to Beatles memorabilia, Beatles um, merchandise, Beatles music really saying whoever owns those rights, which I believe is Universal Music, I think, um, they're going to want to continue to keep the Beatles relevant. So whether it was an industry plan or it's just about what it always is, which is money, um, somehow the Beatles continue to stay relevant. Paul McCartney just dropped another album. Let It Be, the original Let It Be album, hit number five on the Billboard charts now. And they sold, I think they sold another... I don't know. They topped the charts on how many album, uh, how many Let It Be albums they sold that m- paralleled how much they sold back wow. 60 years ago when they were like at the top, top, like the peak of their careers. So that's pretty wild that they're able to continuously stay on top. Yeah. Um, 
Which makes the theory really interesting that like maybe they weren't organic. Maybe this was always from the beginning set out to be this like big thing that, was, that rules for a century. If it was, and that's then they the got, best I've ever heard of. I know, right? But people, I get why you, you get emotionally attached because you relate to them being from humble beginnings. and Liverpool, then become, Liverpool mate. Exactly. Can't take it away from me. Um, but and this also is like, people will go like, oh no, they started as the quarry men and they met when they were teenagers. And that I think all, I mean that everyone that believes this particular theory still agrees that they met when they were teenagers. The quarry men was organic. But then after the death of Stuart Sutcliffe and after Pete Best was replaced by Richard Starkey, AKA Ringo, yeah, Ringo um, is when they became more of a product where they got signed and um, they had studio musicians filling in a lot of the music in the studio, like on their al actual albums, you hear a lot of music that was played by musicians in there. And then uh, George Martin was producing it. And so he, he added right. a lot of oomph to it. So there was like a combination. They were still good musicians, but there was actually, there was also extra added to it. Of course. So, so like, you know, people can take this theory and, and use different elements like that and run with it. Um, but anyway, I think that back to them being body doubles, there's, um, if you YouTube something like multiple Beatles or Beatles weren't organic or you YouTube any of this, there's some videos that pop up where there's a compilation of all kinds of pictures that were taken where you see the boys at different heights. They trade off who's tallest. Like sometimes John's tallest, sometimes Paul is tallest, sometimes George. And it's not because of different shoes they're wearing and it's not because of the slopes, like, cause people try to disprove it with that. Yeah. Like maybe Forced it was angles. Maybe, yeah, exactly. But then there's actual, like where they're all in the same field, you can see their whole bodies and they still switch height positions. Okay. So that's kind of odd. And then um, there's facial recognition software where you can put in multiple images of before 1966, like basically everything pre Sergeant Pepper and then everything now, like doesn't match That's up. That's my discrepancy with 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 only one of the Beatles, frankly. With think, only John. I think John looks different. Everybody else looks the same. So everyone likes to say like they, that Paul died, but I'm like, yeah, you know, he looks the same to me, but but John looks much different. Yeah, I think Paul looks different too. Um, mm. Especially considering, I think all of them look different, by the way. Um, but well, they went through a grunge phase. They yeah, and it's also because we didn't see them for like a year and a half. They didn't. T they stopped their tours abruptly. That's another part of the why these theories come about. Because like, why they they were killing it on tour. They were doing so good, and mm -hmm. then they just abruptly canceled all their tours. Like, why? And then we didn't hear from them for a year, a little over a year. So people thought they were broken up. You know, they mm -hmm. thought that was the secret. And then they all come back with Sergeant Pepper with completely different looks. They got mustaches now. And people look a little different, but yep. maybe you can't remember what they looked like because well, it was so long same, ago. Frank, frankly, maybe Ringo looks the same. Yeah, I mean that I, motherfucker looks the same. I no think what. so. Up on first glance, you know, but yeah. but maybe true, true. because you can't really remember because it was a year and a half ago, and also images switch from being mostly black and white to mostly color. So there's that discrepancy too involved. True, that's harder for your eyes. Who is Sergeant Pepper? Is just. just Sergeant Pepper is a supposedly a, a made up character. Okay. Yeah. Although <laughs> the deeper you go in this rabbit hole, people are like, there actually was a Sergeant Pepper. He was in the MI5. He was one of the, the leading leaders of MI5. And, Let's go. You know, so that is a clue to how they were All right. government controlled. But anyway, they had a completely different look. They all had mustaches. And there are certain aspects to both John and Paul where if you go back to their pre-1966 looks, um, their noses are a little different, their head shapes are a little different, their earlobes are a little different. Why does noses change, though? Noses is different. Like, you have to change your nose. Yeah. Like, through plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that's, that's maybe what happened, maybe. Maybe. Or, or they got replaced by people. Well, I mean, you can have plastic surgery, although it wasn't very common back then in the 60s right. to do that unless you broke your nose or something. Um, there are certain aspects like ear canal shapes, which we went, we went over this in the Paul is dead conspiracy video, but like there are certain aspects you can't change like your head shape and stuff. And yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. why people are like that part's weird or right. whatever. But so this, as this theory goes, there were multiple Johns, there were multiple Pauls. And so maybe the body double died 
Oh, wow. Although he's the one we've been most used to as John Lennon. So it's still like a John Lennon death in my mind. I feel like that doesn't discount that the people we, the person we knew as John Lennon died. Yeah, Yoko's guy. Or you could combine it with theory number two, which we'll get to in a second, which is like the body double also faked his death or whatever. Oh, shit. Um, That's juicy. Right? It's juicy, right? Listen, when we come but back. Wait, before oh, we yeah. come back. Before we come back. Before we come back. Like the, the other aspect to this is um, if you don't, I mean, whether you're not, you think, if you're going to buy all this conspiracy stuff, whether or not you think Paul died or maybe he retired or maybe they wanted a body double to take over, John Lennon also wanted to go with Paul in that theory. And people found, there was a video that surfaced in 2010 of the groundskeeper of Paul McCartney's childhood home. His name is John Holiday, who looks very shockingly like an older now age version of what Paul McCartney might look like. He does. The version where his lobes are still attached and he still has brown eyes and his head's still more round shaped. Um, In my opinion, mm -hmm. current Paul McCartney looks more like Paul McCartney than that sure. guy. I'm not talking about this though. I'm talking about how his friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin Unwin, looks really shockingly like an older version of original pre-1966 John Lennon. Interesting. And so there's pictures of them together and they hang out and um, the Colin Unwin um, is a huge Beatles fan and makes videos about all his Beatles memorabilia. He also touched up the Strawberry Field sign. He leaves flowers on Stuart Sutcliffe's grave, which is one of the band mm. members that died. Um, and he is like, they're just really into the Beatles. They both live in Liverpool. And then they both like, you know, kind of randomly appeared later in life. So that's like, people are just speculating. Yeah. Maybe these were the original versions that we were used to seeing in the press and in on tour. And that's why they look so radically different later. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Isn't there an element to this though, where you're like, well, not you, but, but a lot of people are just like, yeah. Yeah, that white guy looks kind of like John Lennon, huh? <laughs> sure. You know I mean? It's not like John Lennon, but people are like, yeah, hey, that white guy looks like Paul McCartney. If he, if you, you know, if he was replaced by a body double <laughs> and aged. Yeah, sure. There's yeah. something funny about that. It's me. pretty funny. Well, we'll actually get to that. Oh shit! After the break. All right. Please buy whatever we tell you to buy. Buy whatever we tell you to buy. Please, no, but please Download whatever do. we tell you to download. Yeah, we need you to download it and buy it. And go and tell whoever we told you to buy his product that we told you to buy that. Yeah. And tell them how much you love it. And rate it. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. We just want to take a break to tell you to, like, thanks for listening to our podcast. And if you want to rate it, that would be really awesome for us. Like, Listen, we're on break. We're not talking to you like podcast hosts right now. We're just talking to you like people. As a friend. And we just want to say, please rate the show because it helps out huge amounts. Like, we're not desperate. We're, like, kind of desperate. We're giving shout outs right now to all the people who are giving it ratings. So, huge shout out right now to Brian Jorgensen. That was sick of you, dude. Thank you. God bless. Uh, huge shout out right now to Mark. Mark W. in Springfield, Connecticut. Back to our podcast. Jenny Bly. Hey, back to our podcast. In Tuscany, and Florida. back to our podcast. God bless you. Thank you. Steven. Huge. Thank you for supporting the show. <laughs> okay, so you said that people might go, oh, well, any random white guy could be John Lennon. I, I firmly believe that, yeah. Okay. Deeply in my soul. So theory number two might interest you quite a bit because this theory states that John Lennon is alive and he actually does gigs as a John Lennon impersonator. See, that's just a master troll, by the way. Exactly. But John Lennon, if yeah, he, he was did a kind of a troll. He was a troll. He was, he he was totally not was. kind of a troll. He, no, he got off totally on troll. fucking with you. Dude, when he talked he about loved to fuck with how people. they're bigger than Jesus, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He also just like, he loved like leaving little clues, like doing those, those back record things where you play the record backwards and it has a message like, and then the whole Paul is dead thing. Whether you think that Paul is actually dead or that the Beatles were fucking with you, which is more likely, they were contributing to fucking with you. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. left a lot of yeah. clues, like on purpose, alluding to that fact. They even had a whole like trial about it because they thought Columbia was trying to get more money from it because record sales like skyrocketed once wow. that theory came out. So um, anyway, John Lennon was a troll and did have that type of humor where he liked to fuck with you. So. 
what what more perfect than he faked his death and now he he's a John Lennon impersonator. It's really good. So he this theory says that he's a John Lennon impersonator named Mark Stacer. And if you want to get into depth on this theory, there's a guy named Miles Mathis who wrote an entire PDF. It's a 54 page PDF. I read the whole thing and it's really interesting. Like even if you don't, even if you're just if you want to read it for entertainment value, it's it's pretty interesting. And he brings up a lot of details and he connects like so many dots. You can tell he's been in like this conspiracy world for yeah, a while. Yeah. So he's able to like pull from like crazy References. parts to like to connect the dots. Anyway, I'm just going to go over. Basically, I'll go over the PDF and summarize some of the bullet points because these are the things that I think are interesting about it, about the theory. Um, it starts with this movie that was released. Called, it's a really low budget movie. I think it was released in 2014 or no, 2009. So a really low budget movie called Let Him Be about a couple who thinks John Lennon faked his death and then they try to track him down. That's so it's like a psyop wow. within a psyop. Okay. It's like a bluff within a bluff. Yeah. So then in this movie, the actor playing the John Lennon that died but is actually alive is Mark Stacer, who this theory says is actually John Lennon yeah. playing himself actually alive. Which is pretty lazy, by the way, if that's true. Or it lazy. just like is like, well, it's such it's so stupid if yeah, you yeah. believe this that because it's too crazy. Also, the weird thing about this, though, is this movie is completely buried. Like after this paper came out, you can't find it anywhere. Really? You can't find it. It's not on Netflix. It's not, you and you I can't, watched some garbage Beatles movies. Yeah, no, no you, you can't find this movie anywhere. I think when this paper was written in 2016 or when it was last revised, you could find a copy on eBay for $200. But other than that, you could you cannot find this anywhere which is very strange for any movie because usually there's lots of like agreements that they want the people to buy dvds yeah, and you get money that way and, and like over. especially for a low budget movie like you would be trying to recuperate yeah, your yeah, costs yeah. it's a lot of money to make a movie so it's interesting that it's completely buried wow. um another interesting part of this movie is that there are original songs involved that are very lennon-esque so very bold of them to write songs like there's four of them Quintus. original ones yeah. that sound very like lennon and the mark stacer guy sings them who sounds exactly like mark john, john lennon and he does a perfect liverpoolian accent accent really hard. in speech and in singing and you can google videos of him doing one of his gigs where he's speaking fluently even though mark stacer is apparently Michigan born and a full blown American. He lives well, in Michigan. He's American, born and raised in Michigan. Um, so we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but I'll just go through. Okay, so one of the songs he sings in the film is called I Was There. Um, and in it, like, I mean, like basically, if John Lennon was uh, trolling, I Was There is a whole song about how he was there. Right. When John Lennon got shot. Yeah. You know, so it goes along with his personality. Um, so I'll just go I'll just go through this uh bit by bit because I think he really structured it in a way where he goes through like the smallest pieces of evidence and then goes through more what are you trying to read my stuff? Yeah, kind of. Why? Don't I'm read very my curious. stuff. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell you. Everyone's curious. Okay. So, let's start with the director. The director and writer of the film is supposed to be this guy named Peter McNamee. But he has no presence on IMDb whatsoever, except for this one film. And according to the web, he was born, he made this one film, and then he disappeared from the face of the earth. Well, and frankly, he has a bullshit name. M if yeah, I'm going to call the name McNamee? Yeah. Hey, yeah, I don't know. I'm Peter McNamee. I don't know. Oh, there's odd inconsistencies with all, okay. with all these names, too. And so it's it's very weird. Um, it, and we'll then figure it out later. McNamee. Usually people in media, like you're trying to be a director, like you want your name to be out there. Yeah, you want a web presence. You want to build something. Not McNamee. No. And then at if you go to lethimbe.com, it says that McNamee produced some of the biggest names in the British and European music industry before 1987. But uh, Miles Mathis, who wrote this paper, said there's not one word to confirm that. Uh, at LinkedIn, it says he's the CEO of Abracadabra Films, but a web search only 
turns up companies by that name in Chile, Montpellier, and Melbourne, not Toronto, which is where supposedly Peter McNamee is. Um, however, he thinks that Abracadabra, like they used a lot of magic stuff in there. Beatles dropped a lot of magic clues in their stuff, like a magical mystery tour. Yeah. So he thinks that maybe this might have been just another Easter egg, like that Abracadabra films. From fucking Uruguay? From, from... Oh, no, Montpellier is, is Uruguay. Oh, I don't know. But no, he's saying that the only Abracadabra films are in these cities, but that's not where Peter McNamee is. I see. So that can't be his company. Wow. Can't be the same one. That's so interesting. Yeah. So also, he says he's from Blackburn, Lancashire, which is mentioned in the Beatles song, A Day in the Life. Um, and that's about 30 miles north of Liverpool. So supposedly you would accept that it's a coincidence yeah, sure. that I would. McNamee from Blackburn happened to get involved with the film project in Toronto. And then, but then he appears in a lot of the behind the scenes making of documentary and he has a faded English accent, but it's not Liverpool or Blackburn. Okay. It's like a London or Cambridge dialect. Okay. So here's where we start to go, uh, go further into this. It's going to get crazier. Oh, yeah, it gets way crazy. This is just the tip of the Holy iceberg. Shit. When he's asked how he came up with the movie, he says that, like, he played some demo tapes. Or he played some music, and his friend was like, where'd you get the Lennon demos? And then he's like, what? And he's like, so then I knew I wasn't crazy. Like, this was, like, very Lennon-esque, which is really weird because it makes it sound like he was playing the music. But right. then later, it's like, no, he was playing the music from Mark Stacer. But then Mark Stacer says he doesn't get involved till later. In the movie. So there's a lot of like inconsistencies with the story of how this movie came to be. Yeah. Who found the music and who replicated it? Exactly. First. We yeah. don't know. So the yeah, London yeah, yeah. demos pre-existed any of this and they were written according uh, according to like weird all these their stories. It was written by Mark Stacer. Hmm. Okay. So then the same kind of weirdness applies to their producer, Carol Wright, who has just this one film to her credit. Again, just like. This is the only thing on the resume. Um, and the main actor, Sean Clement, also just this one film. And it's all been scrubbed. Of course. Everything's been scrubbed. Like it's not even on her resume anymore. I'm shocked. <clears throat> and uh, now she's, uh, oh, at the time of the film, actually, um, she was uh, uh, she was working for NBC. But even with her working with NBC, it never went anywhere. And it was actually not only did not go anywhere, but it was suppressed. And... You can't get it anywhere. Uh, the female lead in the film is her name is Kathleen Monroe, and she's actually the only actor in the film with any sort of web presence at all. But if you look at her IMDb, all of the roles that she played were as an FBI agent or as like some undercover person. Um, she was in a thing called Survival of the Dead. Is that a coincidence? Then, then she was in another TV series called Without a Trace. I've heard of that. Sure, but they, but they all oh, alluded yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all like it's as if it's clues it's to. They're all about a, someone that faked their death. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's interesting, and also I thought it was interesting that Carol Wright, her name's Carol. Remember that? We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So Kathleen Monroe, uh, the lead that we were just talking about, at certain points in the movie, she's reading different books. But the books aren't like front and center, like an Easter egg for John Lennon fans to catch. They're kind of just like in the corner and it's just a casual throwaway where you can barely read or see what the title of the book is. But they're actually like books that John Lennon was really big on. So they're, the first book she's reading through is a book called Chiros or Kiros. Anyway, it's a numerology book. So Lennon was really, really into numerology. He was super open about yeah. being haunted by the number nine. So there's that. And he referred to this book as his Bible. Okay. So it was weird for it to be, if you were going to place it in the film, you'd want like John Lennon fans to like yeah, see yeah, yeah, it, yeah. but yeah. you can barely even see it. It's like just flashed in one scene. But some Tom Cruise shit. And then in another scene, you can barely read the title of the book she's reading and she's looking directly at the camera while she's reading it. Okay. And at a certain point, you can kind of catch some of the letters and you can put together that she's reading Alice Through the Looking Glass, which was another John Lennon book that he was obsessed with. He loved Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll stuff. Lewis 
Carol. Okay. All of the names are John Lennon-y. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's very weird. These are real people. Uh, which makes that's why I think this theory is so it's juicy because it's, it's just so like I think it's better than the how the hell yeah okay and then it goes on to bring up uh, Sean Clement again the guy who's the lead in this film whose resume is completely scrubbed of this movie um, so this guy Sean Clement never acted in anything else never did anything else you can't find anything else on his resume but yet he's here playing the lead and he looks very much like a young john very Lynn. much yeah and his name is sean clement but if you put it, did his hair in some other way maybe i wouldn't think that so but like his nose yeah, for his example nose is really close yeah and people, he's just about a double people gamer. say that like john lennon's nose is very distinct yeah yeah, yeah. and he's got schnoz yeah and that like yeah, that looks makes sense. very similar to him and yeah. also um he's like okay well if we're gonna play on names sean is a lot like john and sean is also the name of john's one of john's sons okay sean you know yoko ono and his kid um but this guy sean clement he doesn't look like yoko ono's um son at all he's very caucasian um so we don't if he is related to john lennon in any way we is. don't know yeah we don't know yeah. um but we don't know but those are all st he says these are still red f very small red flags compared to what's coming up so which is mark stacer the meat of this whole thing yeah. is mark stacer who we're told is a well-known lennon impersonator not only can he sing exactly like john lennon he mimics a perfect Liverpoolian accent while singing and while talking. Um, he also looks exactly like him. So we'll talk about it. He talks about exactly here, but it says, let's just, let's just pause for a moment yeah. to see what we have so far. So good impersonators aren't that rare, but good impersonators who look exactly like who they're impersonating, even when out of costume, must be very rare and this is what you were saying is that like oh well any white guy could play john lennon yeah but if you look at other john lennon impersonators which we will in a second you could tell pretty much right away that they're not john lennon whereas this guy has down to the very details of his face including moles dental work ear structure everything is a perfect match yeah, for john lennon so what we're what he's saying in this paper is that what we're meant to believe is that um not all, oh oh yeah and he's sorry let me go back a second don't try to read sure. okay let me go back a second so not only can he seeing like him and he looks exactly like him even without costume or makeup um, but he can also play all of John's songs on both guitar and keyboard, singing and playing at the same time. So run the odds on that again. And Lennon would have been 67 in 2007. Stacer with no makeup looks about 65 to 70 in 2007. And the character in the film is said to be 65. They're the same height. So he goes, run the odds again. And then he says, Mark Stacer also uses authentic guitars, the same type used by Lennon. He has compiled one of the largest collections of rare 60s memorabilia, audio and video in the Midwest. Hmm. John that, Lennon could probably say the same thing. All that means is he's a Lennon fan. He is a Lennon fan. That's until it. you, we'll go further into That's this it, though. Man. Cause I said the same. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Anybody could a have a, fan, okay? you know what I told you about that other guy, Colin Unwin has oh, like yeah. a big collection of memorabilia. So, yeah. so far I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, well he did, there was an article in 2004 where you see the full extent of Mark Stacer's collection. And he says, you name it, I have it. He showed only a small fraction of the collection in his hometown in Michigan. And it was still the largest collect collection of Beatles memorabilia outside the Smithsonian. But the story doesn't make much sense because he says he's in his 40s and that he used to attend live concerts by the Beatles in 1964 oh, and 65, please, bro. which would make him many, only man. like, what, seven years old? Yeah, and he barely did it. And he has like all types of memories from these concerts. Um, he also says that uh, he was able to gather a lot of this memorabilia when the Beatles was at an ebb in pop culture, but Beatles were, were never in an ebb. Yeah. Like, as I said before, we're still getting Target Beatles shirts. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, also, what I found most interesting is that is that he, this is the only job he has and he has really expensive John Lennon guitars, but he also has gold records. He has Beatles gold records. 
how how would could you the only people that could get gold records are people that work directly with the Beatles. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Well, like the actual gold records. I see. I see. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that you know when they sell a certain amount of albums. Yeah. Well, I know they do replicas though. Well, no, these are actually. Oh, wow. It says wow. he has actual gold records. He has framed autographs with with original line drawings. He has um, an NYC restaurant menu signed by all four Beatles during their first U.S. tour. And he Got has it. gold records. But back to this movie, Let Him Be. Um, they tell you in the interview that Stace, that Mark Stacer needed makeup to look like John Lennon. But if you watch the film and you watch the interviews and you study the photos, actually the opposite is true. He he needs makeup and a wig and a hat and dark glasses to try to not look like Dude, this guy like looks John like Lennon. John Lennon to me. See, he, the he other does. one is bullshit. Right? This looks like John Lennon. So me. actually when he's Straight playing up. himself with no makeup, nothing, yeah, is yeah. when he looks actually the most like john lennon but when they try to put disguises on him is when he's like trying <laughs> but he still looks like john lennon yeah he does exactly there's he no like hiding john lennon it with like 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 a miss piggy costume on like a miss piggy costume yeah on? it's like clearly the most absurd thing to make you not look like somebody but you look like them yeah exactly yeah. and then you know people are like well you know if you were john lennon and you faked your dad like you couldn't just play mark stacer and get away with it like being a john lennon impersonator yeah, sure, sure, sure. but Paul McCartney actually did a similar thing in 1984, um, where he was he was busking in front of a. a was, excuse me. He, they call it what busking. Call they call it busking. Okay. In front of a square station, like in front of a basically a subway station, and he was doing like yesterday and all kinds of different Wait, songs. No shit? Yeah, and he was doing them in a weird type can of you tune. Watch this? Yeah, you can. That's so cool. Yeah, you can actually. I I can't play it because That's we'll probably so get cool, DC made. But nobody recognized him. Really? No one recognized him. People That's were just so walking cool. by, living their life. You're probably so used to it in, in the UK too. Exactly. Probably in the tube. You yeah. Know? So John Lennon could probably do the same thing. You're yeah, just playing yeah. at these like good low point. rent gigs. That's a good point. Nobody is gonna assume you're actually John Lennon. Um. So it is a pretty good. It is a pretty good. Isn't that gig. funny though? If Paul McCartney is doing yesterday in the tube, uh huh, it's not that interesting, even though it sounds dead on like Paul McCartney because you're like, nah, it sounds dead. Yeah, on like and Paul. he's not even know. wearing a disguise. He's just like in, like he's just being Paul McCartney. That's so incredible. And people, and people are, are like, just, eh, it's whatever. Just a karaoke, Paul. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. The other weird thing is that Mark Stacer's website links to Yoko Ono's ImaginePeace.com website. No shit. Now, you could see like why Len John Lennon would do that, but why would a, an impersonator do that when they're trying to get booked for gigs and make money? Why would their website link to a Yoko site? I maybe would just to seem officially related. Hmm? I maybe would just to seem officially affiliated. Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. We'll give that. We'll give that. Big, yeah. We'll give that benefit of that. Um, also, director Peter McNamee said in his interview that he found him on the internet and that he even lives locally. So I didn't have to pay for his travels because they were in Toronto and uh, Stacer is in Michigan. But it's not that close. It's actually no. 350 it's miles really from far. Toronto. It's so really locally is like not that local. It's six hours by car. It's just as it's farther than Vegas is from from yeah, here, no. which is in a different state. And uh, he if also you were said driving 100 miles an hour. It takes you 3.5 hours. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's going to take you like six hours. So supposedly, like he found them locally six hours away. Um, and then he also said he found Stacer by looking up English John Lennon impersonators. But Mark Stacer isn't English. He's supposed to be a Michigan native. Um, he also says, Mark Stacer says that he was their first and only choice for the role, which is okay. weird. They didn't yeah. have auditions. They didn't audition okay. anybody else. All hmm. right. Okay. While you're on that note uh, about him being American, when you, when you look up Mark Stacer on Checkmate, there's actually no Mark Stacer in the entire U.S. What's Checkmate? I guess it's to look up names of people. Okay. Um, you're told there is... There is a Mark Stacer there, age 60, related to Jan Stacer. But if you go back to Checkmate, you find that Mark and Jan Stacer are actually really Mark and Jan Stacer. It's an alias of Stacer. But Mark Stacer is only 58, which would have made him 52 in 2007 when the movie was shot. But the guy in the film is definitely older than 52. And if you do a white page of shirt, you find no Mark Stacer in the entire U.S. Hmm. But there is a Mark Stacer, kin to Jan, age 58. Hmm. So there's no Mark Stacer anywhere 
Um, and who is Mark Stacer once again? Mark Stacer is a London impersonator. Yeah, yeah, of John Lennon. Yes. Yeah. Just to just to recap it for yeah, the John Lennon impersonator yep. that we're talking about. That's the main yep. part of this movie. Yep. But he says he's an American born guy and there's no, literally no record of him yep. anywhere that underlines it. Yeah. not even as an alias except for to mark steiser so weird um also about his website these are his photos from his personal website if you're hiring an impersonator wouldn't you want to see their face but he doesn't have any pictures of his face they're all like far away shots of his back and like the top of his head because he doesn't want to do any facial recognition yeah, sure, sure, stuff. Sure. Sure. This is adding to this theory. If you're going to go with this theory, yeah. it'd be because you wouldn't want any sense. facial recognition stuff. You have an stuff. agenda. Um, this is what he's, what Miles Mathis, who did this paper, says is the very best part of this theory. Is if you watch him do the interview for the film, it sounds like, mind you, I said he could do a perfect Liverpoolian accent when he's really speaking good. and when he's singing. Well, this is him talking in his regular voice, which sounds like a British person doing an American accent. All right. Okay. As I've gone along and done this, there's, a, there's certain responsibilities now that go along with it. And I only hope I can do the, uh, the image of the person justice. The way uh, people remember him, uh, flaws and all. Even the way he says that, um is not together, American. But the public persona, how we would like to remember the man and carry him with us throughout our life. Yeah, it's very Americanized. Yeah, it's yeah. like that's not a guy that grew up Hard in Michigan. Track. Yeah, no. It no. doesn't even have that that northern no, American no. dialect where it's like the oh don't you know or yeah, whatever. He like he doesn't even have like no. he's like he's trying to do a version of an American that he accent. In a London theater school. Cause I, you know, didn't go into this thinking anything of it, but then hearing that interview, I was like, that is pretty, weird. pretty weird. Like it yeah. doesn't really sound like a, huh. an actual no American. That's crazy. But when you hear him doing John Lennon, he it just rolls off his tongue like he's doing a completely natural Liverpoolian accent. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so this film, like I said, was super, super low budget. But if you look at where they're filming stuff, there's a lot of stuff in the background. There's so much to this PDF, but I'll just touch on a few things. One is that there's a lot of hidden gems of stuff that John Lennon did and was known to collect, like old clocks and stuff. Um, it was in the background and drawings of whales, which is stuff that he liked. But there's this very expensive, there's very, very expensive guitars in the background, which how would you do that? Why would you spend that money just for set decoration yeah. when you don't really have that budget? And the Lennon character in the movie, his name is Noel Snow, um, he plays a hollow body natural finish Epiphany Casino just like Lennon played. His bandmate is playing a Gibson ES330. And he goes, well, the casino isn't a very expensive guitar. Anyone can buy one. Um, those are probably Stacer's guitar. But the is the vintage hardwood grand piano also Stacer's? How about the vintage AKAIGX635D reel to reel with six VUs, which they are actually using in the movie. Now, these are like, this is like recording studio equipment that's super, super expensive, but also super vintage. Like, it's the actual type of recording yeah. equipment, like, not just it's like it, it is the actual make and model and year of the ones that were in John Lennon's actual studio that he has pictures with. Okay. So. If it's just for, you know, pretending like it's John Lennon's studio, why would they spend all that money? And where could they even track something like this down? Isn't it much easier to believe that maybe you're actually in John Lennon's studio? <laughs> like, it's no, kind of, it's not. It's no, kind of easier to not. believe it. Cause how, but that's a hell of a leap, though. Like, to go from there to there is a hell of a leap. What's a hell of a leap? It's a quantum leap. To go well, from... Well, to go from, like, you know... How do they get the equipment? Oh, maybe it is John Lennon studio. That's all. Well, there's, it's not just like, if it was just one or two guitars and it's like, well, those are pretty expensive vintage guitars. Maybe they tracked it down or maybe they rented it from somewhere. Yeah. But when you take into consideration that all of the guitars in the background, not even front and center, like in the background are that, plus right. all this recording equipment, which they list all like the Krumer Roadrunner to keyboard, the band members playing that are uh, the dates from, 1980 and it's extremely rare there's vintage analog mixing consoles one above the other the large top one has 10 vus i got it it's like 
how did they have how did they get yeah, all this someone stuff just from, bought it someone just bought it yeah. yeah sure you could say that yeah yeah someone just bought all the stuff to make the film seem authentic sure but mcnamee said in the interview that the the movie was near zero budget he couldn't even pay for stacer's travel expenses so if they couldn't afford to pay for stacer's travel how did they afford sixty thousand dollars worth of old equipment for a background set if it was just in the background then why was it running if it was okay. just like made to look like it um they also say like maybe it belongs to mcnamee who used to be a music tr producer um but they shot the band scenes and they shot maybe they shot the band scenes in his studio but uh there's no confirmation of this uh, or any of his time as a music producer and he doesn't even mention that on his linkedin profile okay says he's a writer producer director of television commercials promotional commands and corporate communication but yeah just very interesting that like they were able to for that also i didn't come across this before that he didn't get paid to be in this movie mark stacer drove 350 miles to not get paid for this movie well he's obsessed right um so yeah there's they cover like all the whale stuff in the background but look at this um these are some of the pictures, which I can't really show you on the podcast unless you are watching on YouTube, but uh, down to basically they're showing different angles of Mark Stacer versus John Lennon, and he has the same moles in the same place. So just take me under through his why eyes. would John Lennon do this? Okay, that's a great yeah. that's a great question. So according to obviously we can't say for a fact if this were a true theory. Yeah why John Lennon exactly would do something like this. But because of the title of the movie, Let Him Be, the paper speculates that fans may have figured it out that John, that like maybe they went to one of Mark Stacer's gigs and they were like, that's actually John Lennon. And so the movie is like a message like, hey, even if this were true, just let me be. Like, just leave it alone. Just let it be that. Just let people think. But did he say any of that? Did who say any of that? Uh, Stacer. Well, why would he say any of that? Oh no, but but where did they get the inspiration to say "Let me be"? Oh, because that's no, that's just the plot of the movie. Okay, got is it. Is that they actually find John Lennon Work. and John Lennon says, "Hey, like he actually shows him the bullet wound from okay. getting shot, and oh, he's shit. like, I'm laying low, just like, yeah, don't tell anybody about okay. this. Don't tell anyone I'm still alive. Cool. So that's like the plot of the movie, and they they speculate that maybe. John Lennon is trying to send a message that like, hey, even if you think I'm out there still alive, like, don't come looking for me. But here's a little like, here's a little bit of me, you know, and I think like if I were John Lennon, if I were if I were to put myself in this like mentally, like if I had to fake my death and like still be alive, but I'm still an artist, like I would still want to be making music and I would still want to be performing. Sure. So it makes sense that there would be a mu original music from John Lennon's character, which sounds really shockingly similar to John Lennon, and that he's performing as John Lennon, like if you were forced to fake your death and go into hiding somehow. And those reasons of like, well, why would he fake his death and go into hiding? He actually breaks down in this particular theory, which I'll just, I'll try to link it in the description, but it all has to do with money. There's a lot of, lot of details on why and how it comes to that conclusion, which basically are about the music industry, like the music um, companies, Blackstone and Blackrock, basically eating all of the competition and becoming one giant conglomerate of a music industry where there's no separate companies and it's all owned by the same companies right now it's narrowed down to just a few companies yeah. and that um anyone who has rights to different songs or who is making a lot of money off of the music industry they kind of made a deal with to like give us your rights okay. basically okay. um and there's a lot of details that he goes into about that i don't really know about it and it will take a, a long time to go through all of those details but i did think that it was a fun read and looking at the picture side by side even of like different things like his the mole placement his teeth are exactly the same his he they're missing the same molars I in the same it. place yeah, I got it. The, the veins on the back of the hand are the same like it's just so interesting and then when you watch like mark stacer being john lennon he doesn't I will say there are a few songs where it's like, okay, yeah, that doesn't sound exactly like how John Lennon performed it. But if you were doing an impression of yourself that you didn't want people to know, wouldn't you kind of switch it up a it's little very bit? very generous, but yeah. 
Yeah, well, if you're going to open your mind enough to go down this theory, okay, yeah. I'm just trying to think of all no, the yeah, different aspects. Sure. Like, yeah. okay, it's if this were me, at... would I do it like that? Yeah. Would I, if I wanted to still perform and do it basically hiding in plain sight, yeah, I would, you would have to switch up some parts of your act to not be like found out. But you know what Maybe I would do? some parts of your image and stuff too. To look like someone that's trying to pretend to be uh, John Lennon. Oh, by the way, you wanted to see. Um, here are some of the John Lennon, other John Lennon impersonators. Where you could think, yeah, they look like John Lennon. They look similar, yeah. but you can tell, like, when you look at a close-up picture of them, that that's not John Lennon. Sure, sure, sure. You know, sure. Even if they can do the exact mannerisms and vocal yeah. work, so. Pretty interesting. Oh, also, the FBI seized a set of John's fingerprints that had been put up for auction. Uh, why? Well, I mean, someone could probably compare them to... So so the the idea is that it, it just protects what happened. Yeah, because... Because okay. uh, they, they hid him somehow. If someone got Mark Stacer's fingerprints yeah, yeah, and well. they got this and they could compare them, yeah. All right, cool. Hey, look. Oh, also, uh, <laughs> Liam Gallagher of Oasis w- thinks that John Lennon's alive and was like, and mentioned it and then had to backtrack and pretend that he meant that like he's John Lennon and he's crazy. Well, look, if you're a big John Lennon fan, I mean, I think Mark Stacer's Go like, check out Mark Stacer. That's where you gotta go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure after this paper came out, Mark Stacer stopped performing <laughs> live gigs. But this paper was basically trying to tell people to let him be and if you are a John Lennon fan and you want to see Mark Stacer, the best thing for you to do is just like not continue to exploit this theory because then he might not continue to perform, which cool. I think so, is what happened. So we're going to put this podcast out and uh, yeah, hope that he doesn't hear it basically. Well, I, you know, that's, this is a big stretch, you know, to think that someone might have faked their death and been alive as their own impersonator for so long. But I will say that it's a very interesting read. Well, it's old hat for us. It's fun to, it's fun to use your imagination that way. Imagine yeah. there's Don no. Lennon. No, 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 no. Imagine Mark, Mark Stacer. Imagine he's Mark Stacer. Thank you. That's what has a better ring to it. Yeah. All right. We got to go guys. All right. Well, We're way thanks over. for listening. And uh, if there's any other celebrities you'd like me to look into, whether or not they're alive or dead. Bring it. If they're alive, I'll tell you why they're dead. And if they're dead, I will tell you why they're alive and why and what the internet thinks we'll about We'll never it. confirm your theory. We no, have no, no. our theory, asshole. Well, even with the, the mainstream theory of John Lennon getting shot, there's still people that think like, well, even if he did die, it was a CIA setup and... The guy, what's his name? Mark David. Mark David Chapman. Chapman. Okay. How come he gets to be interviewed by Larry King? What other murderer gets Larry King hours long specials? So they're like, because he's a CIA plant and they need to remind you that John Lennon's dead. Yeah. What did so. Chapman say during that interview, by the way? No, oh, he just says why he did it, and he's like, "Yeah, I think Lennon how just he sucked feels about about it. His music sucked. No, no, no. Do you know why he? No. You don't know the official story? I have no idea. Oh, because he was mad at the Jesus comment. Oh, is that it? Yeah. And so he was deeply offended by that. And <laughs> so there's one that he's he's really religious and he wanted to straighten that out. But then there's also stories of him worshiping Satan. So this is why people who get deeply offended know. can fuck themselves. In my I opinion. don't know. Yeah. Just fuck yourself instead. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it's what we're going to Fuck yourself instead. Thank you. But check out the link if you're interested in that and check out all of Wild's conspiracy. There's a lot of videos you can watch on. There's so many theories about the Beatles. It's really actually insane. All right. Check so. us out on Patreon. We have uh, patreon.com slash sticky. I, I do a show called Crypto Corner on there. Like two hours a week, guys. I'm taking you live through all my crypto moves. It's been sick for a lot of people. Uh, and also, yeah, you get the show a day early if you're on there. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.